<laughs> so you know we have been talking about magnetism uh starting since since this week right and you know want to explore it some more explore the whole concept of magnetism and you know see how you know we actually use these things on a daily basis and don't realize right in addition to that we want to also understand the concept of you know finding the magnetic field and all those kind of crazy things in this world of physics right as i said initially that this part of the course is somewhat kind of a little bit abstract right because you're dealing with stuff that you cannot actually see you know what i mean so that makes it a little bit more complicated and you will find that you know we're going to introduce certain concepts or certain techniques to be able to get you know assist us in you know determining certain things as we go along all right so as we said, we're talking about magnetism. One of, the, one of the, the first thing we want to define is what is a magnetic field, right? And let me just go up to my textbook here. Let me see if I have a definition for that. This is where we're going to kickstart, right? Last class we, we were talking about you know the force of attraction, force of repulsion, and the permanent magnet, you know, temporary magnet, all of those crazy things. Now, a magnetic field is a region in which a magnetic force acts. We also made mention of that last class, right? So you know, you know, the further away you take the material away from the, the magnet, right, it's the less force that it will experience, right? And as we said no. that magnetic field yes. is basically circles that are revolving around the magnet, right? Branching out from the the north pole to the south pole. Right? So as you as you as you saw on my screen last week, I mean that last class where I had this thing here with the circles going out like this, right? We refer to these circles as concentric circles, right? So it leaves the north and heads to the south. That's how all the magnets operate, right? Pushes from the north and goes into the south, right? Okay. So we said that the magnetic field is basically that region around the magnet where the magnetic force is, is, is being felt. Now that we know that, right? I think we also looked at, you know, compass in the sense of how it works. We can use a compass to basically can trace out, you know, the magnetic field, right? Or how, how the magnetic field actually works around a magnet. So if I, if I was supposed to take a bar magnet and place it in a container with iron filings, right? This is what it would look like. So as you can see on my screen here, where it has that concentric look, that, you know, that circular pushing away motion, right? Similar to what is on the right here. So if I had the bar man, if I had the compass and I put it, you know, in these different positions, you realize that the arrow would line up itself, forming that curve pattern as what we talked about from the north to the south, right? So whenever you're drawing a magnet, this is how it should look like, a bar magnet, that is, right? And we also said that all magnets have two poles. We refer to that as, a, as being a dipole. There's a north and a south pole. Now, when, when we look at two magnets combined together, so, so if I, for example, I have magnet A and magnet B here, right? If I were supposed to put, you know, the north side of A to the north side of B, I'm going to experience a force of repulsion because like poles are going to uh, repel, opposite is going to attract. And this is what is happening with the, with the, um, the magnetic field, right? 
at X, we say that that's going to be the neutral point. That is as a result of the fact that, you know, no magnetic force is going to be felt in that region, right? Everything here is going to be repelled, right, in the, in the outward direction from the north, right? So nothing is coming together because there's a force of repulsion, right? Now, if there were, if, if it was a case where you had two, if you had a south and a north here, right, you would find that the north would have a line going to the south, you know, a straight line because that would show that attraction uh, force going taking place there. So there are different experiments that we could use to, you know, determine. This, the, 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 which side is that of a magnet, either north or south, whatsoever it is. We won't go into that aspect now. Now, uniform and uh, non-uniform magnetic field, right? So there are situations where we can get a uniform magnetic field, which means you basically have like parallel lines. When you talk about a uniform magnetic field, it is it is it's just parallel uh, lines that you would see. So if you look at this thing on the on the um the left where you see that curved magnet right at point b which is the middle one here this would be a uniform magnetic field because it's 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 it's, it's, it's going straight and it's parallel to to the north and the south pole right whereas now a would not be parallel because that is curved and we know that already all right all right, well, last class, we're talking about um, the use of magnetic field or magnets, right? And somebody talked about the, the hard drive or the computer disk or whatsoever it is. Yes, this is a similar situation, right? Where it would use that, that kind of um, magnetic field aspect. Now, this, this thing here, figure uh, 2711, yeah, um, radar magnetic field so magnetic field you know can can go in a, in a, in a circular pattern as what you're seeing here right All right so this one here would be a, 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 a non-uniform because it, it's not uniform in the sense that it's not going straight down all right so that's not uniform it's a non-uniform one you know later on we'll see how this thing kind of works where you when you have a magnet rotating around uh a fixed object like a, a particular soft metal so that's how like how motors work I right? will talk about that at some point right and if you look now on <coughs> this thing here to the to the left again right you see you, you're seeing more parallel lines in the middle here that just goes to show that yes there's some amount of uniformity taking place here right so the more the, the more the poles are aligned to each other it's the more uniform the, 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 the magnetic field will become. We also may mention of the Earth last last time, talking about that the Earth acts as a magnet. And if we were supposed to take out our phone, some, some phones have a compass, right? I don't know if you could try right now to access your compass. If, you, if not, maybe you can even download it too. Right, but if you do have a compass on your phone, you could actually use your phone as a compass <clears throat> to show you where is the north. And if you put your phone to the ground, you will realize that you know the, the, the change or whatsoever it is. And that is just because you know, you know how they design this thing. The phone, um, I don't even know, but some crazy stuff is happening there. It could be a case where they're using GPS or whatsoever it is, but it could also be a case where there's some magnetized foolish is going on inside of I, I can't really tell but it, it's not the usual uh, compass though right yeah all right now what we want to move on to is so we talk that we talk about the fact that you know certain materials can be magnetized and whatsoever it is and we talk about the earth has in its, its natural magnetic field and it, it has a magnetic force now this guy right you have to pronounce his name for me please is it austere or something like that hello Is 
guys are silent, man. What's happening? First one, I'm half asleep. Huh? I'm half asleep. Fast asleep? Half. Do you need to go drink some water, man? No. Then how you gonna learn if you're fast asleep, if you're half asleep? Okay. What were you doing last night? No, you can't be sleeping for so long. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's not profitable. Profitable to me? To you. But not, not to me, though. All right. But wait, let me just see if I can get this guy's name again. Is that my thing? No, I don't think so. So his, his name is Ostard. Ostard Experiment, right? want to look at what he proposed or what he discovered in regards to the whole magnetic um, field and whatsoever it is or magnetism right so you know in, in the 1890s you know he he wanted to prove that you know magnetism has nothing to do with electricity right and how he went about doing that was to take a compass right so he took a compass and set up a, a simple circuit to say, all right, let me see if anything is going to happen whenever I put my compass uh, near that magnet. So let's let's start off with our simple circuit here. So our circuit, there's no current flowing in the circuit, right? So we expect that nothing is supposed to happen to, to the compass. So if I move my compass around the wire, nothing is going to happen. However, in his experiment, you know, he, he he found out something very interesting, right? And let's see what, what, what we can observe. What what do you guys what, what did you guys see just now? The compass was moved. Good, anything else? I didn't hear that. Speak a little bit louder for me. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay, yes. So clearly we saw that the the compass got deflected. By deflected we mean that you know there is a slight movement in, 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 in what is what took place. Right? So it it it, it, it proved to him that you know the flow of electric current right has an impact on you know this compass and remember you know, how a compass works is that it has to be attracted to a magnetic force or a magnetic field so with this uh you know experiment he now was able to coin you know his his, 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 his experiment saying that you know there is a magnetic field you know whenever current is flowing through a wire right and that is that is that is wonderful because you know you're using electricity and you're creating magnetic field and our magnetism that, that that's that's amazing you know right and we're going to see how we we, we we took this you know a further uh, to, 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 to a next dimension right now if if i move my compass again so at this point my compass is behind the the wire if i put it in front of the wire i realize that you know the pole the polarity change meaning that if if the red is north in this case right when it was under the wire it was in the other direction you know, it was on, it was on the other side right so you know from that we can we can we can deduce that there's a magnetic field that is around any wire that you know that is carrying current right now if i if i change the polarity of my battery i'm going to expect something to happen let me see by changing the polarity of the battery i will talk about polarity we talk about the flow of current right so normally you would have current flowing from the positive to the negative right so on the other side just now it was from positive it was going through this resistor here 
right? I will realize that it actually cheats. So, you know, there are several things that is happening here. We see that if you put the magnet under the, if you put the compass rather under the, 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 the wire, it changes, it deflects to the opposite side. When we change the, 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 the direction of the flow of current, it also affects the deflection in the magnet. Right? So from that, we, 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 we were able to see that magnet, magnetic field or magnetism is produced when, there, when, when current is flowing through a wire. And this is going to lead us into, you know, a big thing, a big word, right, that maybe some of you have heard before. And this word is what we call electromagnetism, right? So we're fusing electricity and magnetism together to get one huge concept known as electromagnetism. So it's a, surprisingly, the current, the, the experiment rather, uh, provided the opposite current, uh, current electricity and magnetism were um, inseparable. So this experiment was to separate them in a sense, right? Or to see that you know they they, they, they don't have any correlation. But but in him doing that experiment, he realized that a magnetic field was around the wire. All right. So we see that just now. Now, one of the things that we want to be able to can do is to predict, you know, which direction the magnetic field is, is acting around a current carrying wire. And this is where it gets tricky because, you know, you're not able to see exactly what I'm about to do. Or, you know, maybe if I was in front of you in terms of the classroom, you'd be better to understand. But I have to just try and see if you'll get it. But here's, here's what we're saying now. Experiments have shown that the direction of a magnetic field due to a current carrying wire can be predicted by applying the right hand grip rule. So, as, it, as the name suggests, right hand, right? And it says grip rule. So, it's pretty much like you taking your right hand. So, right now, I want you to take your right hand. If there is a pencil in, if you have a pencil or whatsoever it is, grip the pencil in your hand right so your four fingers are going to curl over that pencil or that pen so here's my hand right now i have my my graphic tablet pen inside of my hand and i'm gripping it so i'm holding it not 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 like when you're writing but your your four uh, fingers here should be gripping that thing <clears throat> let's imagine that when you use your right hand the point of your pencil is going to show the direction, right, of the current. So the point of the pointy part of your pencil, typically like an arrow, is going to show you like, you know, the direction of the current, so to speak. Now, sticking out your thumb, just like a, a little, you know, that, that, that kind of thing where you, you book them off a man's thumb and all them kind of things, eh? or your friend's your, your friend thumb, right? Stick out your thumb, I don't know if you're seeing me clearly, right? Now your thumb is going to point in the direction in which the current is flowing, right? Now, how the right hand grip rule works, those four fingers will symbolize the magnetic field. You understand? So whenever I curl my fingers over, so whenever I curl my fingers over like this, right? It shows me that my magnetic field is moving from down upwards and going in into my, into the palm of my hands. So that's how the right hand grip rule works. So if you know the direction of the current, right, using your thumb. So if, if I look at this um, diagram on, on the screen, imagine that that's the wire. <coughs> imagine you <coughs> gripping the wire and you use your thumb to point from left to right, right? By that, you... <coughs> The, the, the magnetic field will be moving from uh all right hold on let me, let me explain this so yeah once once you grip the wire in that direction from left to right the magnetic field that, that we're going to experience is going to come into the palm of your hands right so curling the fingers over is going to show that the current is going in that direction 
So it says, imagine that the wire is gripped with the right hand so that the thumb points in the direction of the convectional current. The fingers that curl in the direction of the field as shown in figure 20, I mean 27.1 something. Let me see if I can find that, that image. Yes. So let's look at this image here. So if my current was going in that slant was direction, right? Using my right hand, not my left hand. Only my right hand would have to apply here. I can now basically sketch, you know, how the magnetic field is going to look like. So the, 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 the tip of your fingers would symbolize the arrows. Those arrows that you're seeing here, it would symbolize those arrows, right? Showing that it is going over, you understand? So basically from, from, from um, the southern part over to the northern part, if you're looking at it from that, that standpoint. There's another, are we understanding by the way? Yes, really. You got it? Yeah, I tried it. Yeah. Brad, Brad, four, you get it? Sir. No, sir, you're not answering yet. Sir, this isn't Brad Ford. No, man, not you. Oh, I'm sorry. But M. Brad, Brad Ford, you're not a group. What, what, what are you going to talk to Brad Ford? All right, Jay, what are you saying? Um, sir, when I held the pen in my hand, I felt my heart beat in my hand. It was somewhat in the direction of my thumb, so I don't know. I don't know if that's anything in related to this. <laughs> so why you, grip, why you grip your hand so hard? Eh? You don't feel the same? You must have your, your, your palm of your hand with your, your fingers, you know? No, I just held it um closely and I feel the um the heartbeat in my palm. So it shows that there's life in your hands, <laughs> right? But it, it has nothing to do with because there's no current that is flowing through your pencil right now because it's not connected, it's not a wire, right? So you don't expect to feel any, any anything happening right now, right? So, don't, no, don't, so what that meant is that the direction in which the um the blood is flowing in my hand, it somewhat showed me exactly what you're showing me there. That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, I don't know how the blood will come into this case. That's that's big. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Right. So don't 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 don't, don't mix the blood. That that need a bio. <laughs> we don't want that here. Right. Well, all we want is you know your 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 fingers curling into your palm. And the tip of your fingers, tip of your fingers will show that this is the where the magnetic field is pointed. You understand? So wherever my 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 my, my fingers curl, that is going to show me, you know, the direction or direction of the magnetic field. Remember, we say your thumb is going to show you the current. So here is the current going in that direction, and then now my my uh, fingers will curl over like this to show that yes, magnetic field is going all the way over. Now the other one here is the right hand screw, screw, right hand corkscrew. So a corkscrew really, I don't know if you ever, you ever burst a wine bottle before. <clears throat> I've never done that, but let me see if I can find a corkscrew. On the internet quickly. So this thing here, yeah, what's the movie and you see them use this thing to pop, to, to pop the, the wine thing? It's like you put it in the top of the, the, the thing, the, 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 the bottle stopper, and you, and you twist it around like this, right? So similar to that, <clears throat> imagine you having a, a, cork, a, a cork screw in your hand, right? It, it has to be in your right hand for it to work. So when so the, the pointed part of the, the corkscrew, this part is going to show where the current is going, right? So let's imagine that you your current is is flowing through a piece of paper. So let's let's imagine that you had a piece of wire, you bore a piece of paper, right? So this is my wire, my, my paper. Good. And then now I, you know. I push this um, thing through here, 
Yeah, we check for them, but hold on. We try to find something because government do pay that you know. So yes, so here is the paper. Good? And then I have the current going through the paper. Using the corkscrew method, it will be like this. Uh, let me see how this I can do the corkscrew. Um, there we go again. So hard. It's not as easy as that one. Um, give me a second. I wonder which, let me just read this thing to see which finger they said would represent that R or no. But yeah, so you have the cock screw in your hand, in your right hand, and then you, know, you, you push it in the paper, or you push it, you know, in the bottle, so to speak, right? This is your wire, the, the current is flowing down in your bottle. You would use your right hand to twist it like this, right? So that twisting motion that is going on with your palm or with your hand, right? The, 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 the way how your hand is turning, right, is going to uh, reflect, or not reflect, it's going to show the, the direction of the magnetic field. So if you're looking at my screen, you realize that it is going, you know, in a clockwise position. So you're twisting your hand around that way. I know, I, I, don't, I don't think persons, when they're pulling something, they pull it anti-clockwise. I don't think you guys do that, right? Unless your, your brain is rewired differently. But I, I, I suspect that whenever you're pulling a bottle, you pull it in a clockwise position. You understand? So you pull it that way. So the direction where your hand is turning is going to now show you that that's where the man is. I want to forget that. Yes, sir, but basically your thumb, anytime you twist it, so your thumb is basically leading in the direction. No, so well, at this point, you know, we, we, we all right, guys, um, if, if time runs out on us, just go ahead and click the same link again, all right? I just have 10 minutes on this session. So let's, let's look at it. We're not involving the thumb wholeheartedly in this case. So we're not using the thumb to show us any direction or whatsoever. All we're doing is just using our hand, gripping the, the, the corkscrew. Once your hand grip the corkscrew, the twisting motion, right, is going to show you the direction of the current. Whereas now the pointy part that, that goes, that went down into the bottle stopper is going to show you like that's the direction of the current, right? So that's that we were exploring just now. You know, in event that the current is going in the opposite direction. So what if now my current was going from beneath here, you understand? Then when I twist it, so let me see. Um, yeah, so using your right hand, say so if I have the, the right hand thing here, the, the, the screw, the, the, the cork screw, and I twist it, I would expect that my hand is going to go like this. You understand? Going from uh, in an anti clockwise position. So we now expect that our magnetic field is going to be the opposite of what we're seeing on the screen right now. Right? Because the direction of the current is going upwards, meaning it's going out of the paper. Right? So that's that for that one. Now we want to highlight certain things. I won't really be taking other things and notes while we're going on or whatever it is, right? Because I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you always remember this. But all right, important to know that a dot indicates a direction coming out of a paper at right angle, right? So as we said, this thing is somewhat abstract because you're talking about things coming out of the paper, which is which is like madness because you you have never seen current come out of a paper, but it's just what what it is. So this paper on my screen, right? If the current was coming out of the paper, I would have a dot, right? And if the current is coming out, it means that these arrows would be in the opposite direction, right? It wouldn't be in this case. Then they also said that an X or a plus indicates a direction into the paper at a right angle right or at right angles so that or cross with circles around them are used for currents and without circles for for magnetic people so it, it yeah um so we're saying that you know to show 
the 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 the, the, the magnetic field we can use um dots well we can use not not not, not the magnetic field by the way we can use dots to show where that current is going out of a paper and we can use x to show that current can go in so it it there are two things that we're going to explore you're, you're going to see it eventually so let's let's look at this now so you can grab a piece of paper right and you're going to put that dot in the in in in, in, the, in this thing here you're going to go ahead and draw some con concentric circles just know that you don't know the direction as yet you understand you don't know the direction get a piece of paper draw those circles put the one in the middle here which would be the direction of your current then now you need a second one to compare it against right so you need the one with the x i would say that the one with the x means that the direction is flowing out and i mean into the paper rather so go ahead and do that quickly so that i can um you know check to see if you understand that part of what Right, let's go out, do a register check to see what's happening here. How many persons do I have in class? 16. I think the class have 30 odd persons. All right, Bradford, you still near Bradford? Yes, sir. Are you understanding, by the way? Yes, sir. Brianna Walker. All right, what do you, do you mark your absent, Miss Walker? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. No. Oh, cool. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. I want no one there when you understand. You say, yes, sir. Me get it. Me get it. Me get it. You understand? Yeah, yes, man. Sir. I want to hear that enthusiasm, you know, going along the class. All right, Tomlin, where you there? Sir, I am here. You, you have you drawn the circles as yet? As yet? Yes, sir. All right, good. Now, Russell. Yes, sir. I'm in the class, sir. Oh, you're in the class. All right, but you understand what's going on? Have you have you learned this before? Yes, sir. All right. And you understand that? Good. No. All right. So you say you have learned it, but you don't understand it. That's what you say. No, me understand. You understand? Okay. All right. Carice. Who's Carice? Do you understand what's going on? Dixon, you understand? Sir. Russell, do you understand? I mean, not Russell. Um, Carice, by, by the way. Here, stop to me quickly now. Yes, sir. Uh, All right. I think your internet kind of kind of shaky. That's why. All right. Never mind. All right. Gabriel Woodburn, you understand what's going on? Yes, sir. So far. All right. Good. So now that we have that in our books, right? All we're saying now is that the dot is going to show that the current is going into that paper so that paper that you drew just now imagine it in such a way that the current is going to flow through that actual paper right by using now the 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 the, the which one i use now all right no i didn't I, did i say into the paper no that's not that in, in, that is incorrect so the dot uh, means out of the paper all right so 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 scrap what i just said i want about into the paper so the dot actually means out of the paper so if I use the 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 right hand grip rule, so imagine that wire coming out, and you grip that wire with your with your with your with your palm, right? Those fingers are going to curl right around that wire, and as you can see on my screen, that it is pointing upwards. So it is going in an anti-clockwise direction. The magnetic field is going anti-clockwise because your fingers are curling over like this, and as I said, it's going right into your palm. Right on the other other end now, where that one is going into the paper. So if you hold that paper and use your thumb and point inwards to the paper, you realize that your fingers are going in, in a clockwise direction. All right. 
So that's that's what we what that's what we mean. All right. All right. On this side, this is this is this is, this is what I was I was I wanted you I wanted um to, to experience a little bit more, in the sense that. They, they can use the dots to represent whether a magnetic field or the, the direction of a man or the magnetic field is being moved. You understand? So um we're gonna use the same right hand grip rule again. So let's imagine that you have a have a um a magnetic field due to a clockwise current. So if you're if you have a clockwise current going in a loop like this, right? We can we can also administer the right hand grip rule. And then now these dots, the dot right here would also show that the magnetic field is coming out of the paper on the, on the left hand side here. So the dot would show that it's coming out. And then now the X will show that the magnetic field is going into the paper, right? So let's let's just look at that one. So imagine you having your 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 hand wrapped around that curved part of the wire. Wherever it, it started down here. Are you seeing my cursor by the way? Yes, sir. So the current start down here, sir. right? So take your right hand and you grip that thing. Now, if you bring it over, bring your 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 your, your four fingers over, you realize that it is going into the paper. If it, if you're if you if you have it if you draw it, you realize it's going into the paper. And then now, after it goes into the paper, and you curl it around the wire, you realize that your your fingers are pointing out of the paper now. So that's what, what that's what I'm trying to say. That those dots. Can also show us that the, current, the, the the magnetic field is going into the paper and also out of the paper, right? By doing that right across, if you do that right around the wire, you'd realize that you know it, it is maintained.